I met somebody that explained the importance of abstinence, but didn't explain it like, uh, uh, not like uh, I'm waiting until I'm married. Like yeah. abstinence is just the practice of not having mm-hmm. sex, period. So not knowing, not being aware that it's like, okay, it's not me saving myself to a marriage, it's just having control saying, no, I'm being abstinent for here, but it has discipline over yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you could say I'm abstinent for the year. That means I'm doing 100%. this to control myself, which is what you were saying. It's about self. Right. So I, I get it from that that perspective. It's just. <laughs> he said it's like, just. I know I'm not doing that because. <laughs> well. <laughs> I know I'm not doing it because I think it's cool and y'all do it. Like, like, so, <laughs> we're not asking right, you Right, 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 right. <laughs> we're not is asking not, you this. Definitely not, this is definitely not an infomercial <laughs> to be like, here's why you need to do it. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Iman Amongst Men. We don't shy away from topics other people are too afraid to talk about. We go all the way there. Now let's get it. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men. I'm Iman Shumper here with my big brother Ari. Ari, go and give a what's up to your people. What's going on, people? Today we got another very special guest. Uh-huh. We got executive coach. Let's go. Motivational speaker Come and on. fellow Chicago native. Give it up and welcome to the show. Johan Martinez Kalian. Oh, almost. He almost had it. <laughs> no, it's all good. I think I need to say it. I feel like, look, you want to yeah, try next? Say it. No, you, you try did. Next? You <laughs> did. Full disclosure. You <laughs> said it already. Kalilian. Yeah. Kalilian. Like, Joe, okay, I overcomplicated. <laughs> I overcomplicated it. It happens all the time. Literally, sometimes I'll be at a speaking event. Like, how to say your name? Yeah. Charmillion. We can go with the different pronunciations. Charmillion. No, no, no. That's a, oh. that's a Pokemon. That's how I knew to say it like that. <laughs> no, Kalilian. no. Got we it. are not so going to do that here. here. Yeah, Kalilian, we're not going to do that here. Chameleon, See, Charmillion. his I, sense of race and no, relation. No, I'm, <laughs> yo, I'm a rapper. It's, <laughs> well, uh, people, oh, so, so, so rappers. <laughs> rappers are, are race. Martinez, <laughs> Kalilian. Boom. Bow. Cool. Well, Smooth. Okay. <laughs> All you had to do is play Pokemon. That's it. What's my name? Iman. Just don't poke me. The theme of today's show (laughs) is leading with love. Uh, When you hear that phrase, what do you think? I was wondering um, what what the alley-oop was going to be. You yeah. know, because I've, I've watched some of the episodes and mm. I was like, I wonder what the theme's going to be. You guys didn't <laughs> give me the inside scoop. Um, actually, so I, how about if I set the stage like this? Let's do it. I love when these types of conversations are actually conversations. And so I, I watched a few episodes and I binged. Yeah. Oh. And the way that I'm going to answer that question is, I feel like leading with love a lot of times is being really interested in people. Yeah. You know, so much so that sometimes these conversations could be like, okay, I'm the guest. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. interview me, mm-hmm. ask me all the questions, but I would love to, ha- to really interview y'all too, you know, and to, to ask you guys questions as well. Because I think, um, you know, I have this brief window of time to be in your presence. And what does it look like to actually connect yeah. and be real with each other, right? Be authentic. Because that seems like it's the part of the value of your show. Straight up. Gotta I, be. I think that when we put the show together, that's the only reason we would watch it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me and him are both very, take a bunch of information, dump it on the table. We're, we're going to cipher through it to find the most important pieces and the things that we know that we can right away apply it to our life and do something with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And our job coming on this show was to try and not even, there's hot takes that we can ask about. But right. Like for real, because yeah. we were trying to get to who the person is or at their core to make sure that if we do be, start becoming a fandom, can we all the way support them? Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it's a lot to do with what you just said and meeting people and learning from people because you don't get this time to sit down and really pick somebody's mm-hmm. mind, see what they really think. And if it's not a genuine, regular conversation, I probably wouldn't say either. I could sit here with my media right. training and shut the <laughs> right. And it's easy to do that because, I mean, you know, part of what I was thinking about as, as I was prepping to come in, like you guys have been doing this for two years now, right? Yeah. Well, and three. Was, three, right? Three, three years? Technically, yeah, three. That's, three. I mean, that's amazing. And I, I feel like there's probably so much that you've learned about yourself in the process. Mm-hmm. So like what has doing this show or like partaking in this show taught you about you? Yeah, I think uh, I'm more interested in people than I thought. Mm. I'm just... 
I don't like somebody feeding me who they are. I don't want, I think I, I understood media and marketing too early. I got a glimpse of it in my life. And then going straight to New York, I had to deal with media in a totally different light. And I was like, they kind of forcefully tell you, like they tell your brain, this is what it is. And then when it's not that for real, it's like a, a disappointment that comes with it. Hmm. And um, within learning that, sometimes you just don't even want to know anything about a person. You kind of want to just stay in your own lane. But you start seeing that, especially when you get chances to speak to uh, someone that's gone a little further in life, somebody that's a little older in life, um, somebody that's in your same boat, you start realizing that you, those conversations and sometimes those interactions um, are things that help you grow. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes there's a, a standstill of growth if you isolate yourself. Right. Don't get me wrong, there's also times that isolation can help propel you within your growth as a person, but you can't uh, stray away from those moments when somebody says something and the emotion behind it may not have been at your frequency that you wanted, mm -hmm. but the message was, you were, you were receptive to that message. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or that advice or that idea, and uh, you went outside yourself for a second, and I think that with this this podcast, there's a, a a pocket that within every conversation we have, there's a pocket we get in where, I don't know, people pull something out that you, you can tell they didn't come on the show to talk about that, but they are so proud and happy to talk about that, whether it's their children, uh, whether it's a, a moment in their life where they were really just down and it makes them think of that moment and they're proud to have that moment live on the show. They're just like, wow, I, yeah. I didn't realize I, like having those moments, it really helped me as a person because I started realizing sitting on the show, there was a lot of things I haven't tapped back into. Like mm. Ari may say something and connect a dot for me that I didn't realize I was searching for. I just mm. kind of made it up as a kid. I just made up what that was and had no real knowledge or context. genuine yeah, yeah. context of what was going on. So I just wrote it off and was mad at my dad. And Ari would be like, man, my dad did this. And, and I'm like, wait, that's why he didn't come to mm. whatever event? That's why he wasn't there? He's like, yeah, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, he worked two times. You remember he worked at Cartel? <laughs> What'd you think he was doing? And I'm just like, damn, I don't know. Mm. I just was caught in my own little kid heart, and I'm just like, why he didn't see my project? Also, mm. Cartel is a train operating service. <laughs> not not the, yeah, what you may bad, think. Not the, bad, <laughs> keep it cool. Yeah, keep you gotta it gotta be, cool. Yeah, 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 really culturally correct. sensitive. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Right, we are in a culturally yeah. sensitive yeah. space. <laughs> So just make sure you don't assume that. He's a stand-up guy. That would be a good movie, though, if your dad, you thought he was doing that, but he, he was really a part really of Cartel. cartel. <laughs> it was Cartel like Trains. Cartel. You turn my I'm daddy just, you know. into something new. You are turning into I'm him sorry, now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't now. help it. I, I can't help it. it. I can't no. help it. We're in L.A. Yeah. Keep the ball yeah. rolling. It's a movie. Keep the cameras rolling. Keep the cameras rolling. I like this guy. I guess for me, though, like to your question, would be, just people and like goes a little bit to what you said in the beginning, like just understanding people and why they are where they are and why they are the way they are. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can, and to me, it's kind of like how you were just speaking of where it's like, it's a connected dot type feeling where it's like, Oh, you know, like actors do this or, Oh, actors think like this or, Oh, uh, you know, artists feel like this before they put out something like, Oh, it's not the way that I thought it was originally. And now I'm seeing something and hearing it, you know, from the horse's mouth that it's not that way. Right. So it's like now I can revert to that. Like I do it all the time. I revert to things that happen, different guests, different interviews. And I'm always able to pull something that, you know, they did that I can reflect on or at least something that I can use immediately. And I think yeah. that's really important. And that's what I try to or we try to push on the show is like to give young men and just all men alike tools to improve, but do it immediately. Yeah. yeah. It seems like you guys are really students of life. We I'm trying to be. be. I'm you trying to be. be I'm trying to be. I, I realized that I took more advice in my life 
Like, I've had more times that people will say, damn, bro, like, you really smart or you really, like, I'll get them a piece of advice. And they'll be like, bro, you, you got to start doing this more. And I'm like, bro, I didn't do nothing but what my dad told me yeah. to do when I was eight years old. That's what I told you to do. We grown, but it still apply. I just told you what he would have told me because I could still hear his voice. Mm. But it's like, damn, I didn't realize I took that advice. I did start and told people to do stuff and said it with a certain ring to it. And they're like, why you say it like that? And then I realized, oh, my grandmother used to say it to me like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying it to them a certain way every time. And they're like, why do you say it? And I'm just like, damn, I listen to so much stuff. I grab so much stuff. There's uh, so many qualities I have to myself that are from advice yeah. and from a conversation where I looked somebody in the eye and I felt like, He's not, she's not, I like that about them. Mm. And I respect that. Like somebody come in somewhere, they look presentable, they act a certain way, they can speak clear, they can communicate with everybody in the room and they offer me some information. If I respect it, I take it with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And not only encourage people to do it more with their interactions, like just make it mean something. Like never speak to someone dislike hey, how's your day going thing that's like the Yo, awkward, weird. For real. The small talk. The small talk. I hate like, the pleasantries and the small talk and the like, how's so the strange. weather? And right, It's like, so strange. Yeah. It's so strange. But it's easy access, right? It's, it's, it's not. I it's think for actually, people, it's, the, it's, the, in their it's the most comfortable way to communicate to people, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't have to go deep to ask you, how's the weather, right? But, mm -hmm. if, I, but if I actually want to know you and be with you in that presence, right? I got to go, I got to go past the pleasantry. I got to go past the comfort right. and figure out who are you? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you guys ever want to need a help, <laughs> a guide, hey, how's your day going? <laughs> hey, man, uh, don't I know you from something? Like that, all that, skip that whole part and go to something like, hey, man, I like them shoes. Mm -hmm. Cause that's a, you know, like, oh, you wear, you must wear a lot of sneakers cause you got them shoes. That's a great way to start with any guy you meet. That's a great way to start a car. Right. Damn, that's your car? Man, I got the woo woo woo. How is that one? How is it on gas? That's, that's a good way to start. That's a good small talk. Yeah, for me. I was just going to say, that's still small talk. That's buddy. not though. Cause no, I really want to know about well, your car. I is. really want to know about your yeah. shoes. My, like if I wore glasses, my favorite thing to ask people with glasses, I'd be like, them for you to just look cool. <laughs> These, or, are or, These, These are real. These are real. Prescription. Okay. I'll, I'll be 45 this month. So like about a year ago, I was like, oh, I need glasses. Oh, it just happened like, to you. Oh, it just happened? I was like checking my phone. I'm like, um, do I really what? need glasses right about now? Is this what's happening? Damn. So just a slight, yeah. It's a decrease. I got, got two kids on. now, and I feel like, you know, not getting as much sleep. I don't know, 45, <laughs> about to be 45 years old. All this stuff happening. That's why I have, like, paint on my nail. My daughter's doing all this, too. So my whole life is changing. Oh, you hey, are you? Because you're a girl dad too, right? Me too. Both of y'all girl do dads. Colors. Yeah. They try. They, I don't do colors. This is what happened. Like a couple of days ago, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to be on the show. You know, we could take it off beforehand. Right, right, but right. But then, you know, something happens and then something happens and then something happens. I'm like, oh, it's the day of. <laughs> I'm just going to rock it and be proud and be like, my daughter, she hooked me up. They did me you like that. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, this is real. It's yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't. I had that. Yeah, I just I, it's gone right after they do it. But the, I, three days, he got it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing. Though. Yeah, this he's has been three. It. Yeah, I'm sure he would have gotten rid of it right after if they let him. Oh no, he yeah, said like, they repainted it. The my daughter, day. he's just oh, they just my kept, daughter's a gangster. Yeah. yeah, her name is her name is Isla. She's three years old and she's straight up. She'll walk into the house. She's like, I'm the leader. Oh, what? <laughs> it's like right I'm away. like, you just came out of daycare right now. You automatically the leader. She's like that. I'm the She's leader. like, follow me. Let's go. I was like, okay. Oh, Let man. me paint your nails. Oh, man. <laughs> right, right. Come on. You about to get a, pedic <laughs> a manicure. Growing up in Chicago, humble boy. Yeah. yeah. How did your environment influence you and your outlook on life? I, I'll, start, I'll start with this story. Because when I was in eighth grade, you know, we all have our school moments, right? Yeah. These, these moments in school that you think the people who are given the job to, to give you wisdom or insight or direction mm -hmm. are going to do just that. So I remember in eighth grade, you know, I, I grew up in Humboldt Park when I was growing up. It was not a great area. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, a lot of gangs, a lot of violence. 
And we all knew that, like we were kids from the hood. So we understood what we grew up in. Yeah. And then one day our principal comes in, her name is uh, Sister Betty Smigla. So she was like a stocky Polish American woman kind of built like a linebacker. <laughs> and she comes into the room and she's looking at all of us eighth graders. And she's like, all right, I want to tell y'all something. Um, most of y'all in this room um, are going to drop out of high school. Mm -hmm. And then she says, a lot of you young ladies are going to get pregnant, you know. And, Damn. And she said, some of you guys are going to join a gang. And then she said, some of you will not even see the age of 18 because you're going to get shot and killed in this neighborhood. And I remember like so vividly, right? It's like this person, <laughs> she's supposed to come into the room and say, hey, I, I know you guys don't live in the best mm -hmm. environment <laughs> and I know it won't be easy. But with guidance, wisdom, direction and community and, you know, fill in the blank of anything else we'll make it through. And we needed some sort of like visionary leader or somebody full of hope who could step into that room in that point in time for us as little, you know, 12 year olds who can give us that vision of what's possible. Instead, she just kind of told us, yeah, this is what is. Yeah. This is just, she made y'all statistics. Yeah. Yeah. She, she saw us as oh, statistics or man. as numbers. And, and that stood out to me in such a powerful way. Cause I was like, that's not going to be me. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm, I'm not going to live that life. And, and then that coupled with my, my uncle um, on my Puerto Rican side. So, like I said, Puerto Rican and Persian. Unique combo. Yeah, he was, uh, I'm Persian Rican, I like to say that. He was like, everything negative at that time frame that you could rack up, wrap up into a person, he was it. Like, he had, you know, he was in, in a gang and, um, like, alcoholic, drug dealer, drug abuser. And I had this, this, this moment in my life where I remember I was walking outside the house and I was going to school. Um, I put my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle backpack on, you know what I mean? I was getting ready for all of it. And then as I walked through the living room, he's, it's eight in the morning and he's drunk on the couch mm. at 8 a.m. But the kind of drunk where you could smell the stench from a mile of away. liquor, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was just like looking at him and I asked myself, I'm like, is that going to be me? Mm. And this was before the principal conversation, right? 11 years old, like I just, I was frozen in my tracks, right? I'm just looking at him and I'm like, is that going to be my life? Is this, is, is this me 10 years from now? Because so many people in my environment live that life. And again, I'm not, I'm not judging my uncle. It was just something about the way that he lived my life and how it spoke to me where I was like, it doesn't work. Mm. Like mm. I could see not only the harm that he was doing himself, but the pain that it caused my grandmother. Yeah, the effect. You know what I mean? Like effect. she, like I would see sleepless nights from her, like something, you know, he would steal from her, things like that, that I was like, man, this can't be what it means to be a man or what it means to, to live in this world. So when I was 11, I was like, definitely not going to live that life. And so I, I feel like growing up in Chicago at that time frame, I was a great sort of like observer of life. Mm -hmm. mm. And I learned a lot through secondhand information where I could see people living. This is what they're doing. Oh, this is how you lead. And I just knew like, that's not the way that I want to show up. And then I embarked on my own journey of like, okay, what does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to be a man? You know, and obviously that's been an ongoing journey that I'm still figuring mm -hmm. out today, yeah. but I feel like Chicago was instrumental in that. And, and I'm a true Chicago in the sense that I think Chicago is like the best city in the world, with you. right hands down. When I moved to the West Coast, people were like, why'd you leave then? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I, like, I get you know, it, right? I get you it. just don't understand. Weather and put it That's there. it. Uh, yeah. What were some of the early challenges you face, uh, yeah. especially when you started speaking to audiences? A part of me wants to give an example or a story where it's not so flattering, you know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, cause you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, the challenge was speaking in front of 10,000 people, stuff like that, where it's like, oh, look at how no, great. That. We <laughs> dropped the stop button. That. Yeah, yeah, no, right. no. Good? Yeah, yeah no. go ahead. Well, I, I would say that's, that was the first challenge, right, where I went from my first speaking opportunity where I was speaking to 15 people. Right. And then I remember, like, a, like I'm prepping. I'm, I'm, I'm like, this is where I cut my teeth. Like, this mm -hmm. is where I figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I'm speaking in front of an audience of 1500 live in like a, a auditorium where everybody's like wrapped around me. Oh, yeah, that's different. <laughs> and 
right? I was like, there's nothing that you can do to prep for that type of challenge as a speaker because you just got to be in it. Mm -hmm. But I was so um, connected to my storytelling. Like I was so connected to my ability to communicate my story in a way that could link with other human beings and, and people would be able to see their story and my story. Like, so I knew when I'm doing the small stuff, it was building towards the bigger stuff. Um, now I'll, I'll link it to this cause I, I started to become really kind of addicted to that. The, what? the, like the, you know, the feel of like, Oh, I just knocked it out the park. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? Like win. people yeah. came up to me afterwards and like, yo, you changed my life, this story or this, or, or it resonated with me. Cause when you talked about, you know, this person or that person, I, f I feel it. And when I, this was the other challenge, I think that I wanted to, to kind of pinpoint was I stopped choosing gigs because of how it was going to stretch me. And I started choosing gigs because of how good I could do in the gig. Mm. And that was the next challenge of like, hey, what does it look like to, to, to actually choose opportunities that are hard for you? That like give you a tough time and that force you to figure out, well, how, how are you going to grow to accomplish this? Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I think that was like this next phase of my own development and growth just as a speaker and as a human being. And I, I'm, I feel so fortunate for that awareness. Like whatever caused that to click, because I think that's the thing as we yeah. continue to grow as men and, and humans. Definitely got to click for the guy. Right? Mm -hmm. Like something, something happens. You're like, oh, like I've been coasting. Mm -hmm. That perspective right. change. Yeah. And whatever, our, whatever your thing is, right? I think one of the biggest temptations is to start to coast and to start to be a, a person who phones it in. And I don't have to do the extra work. I don't have to be diligent. I don't have to be disciplined. I could just rest off my laurels and my success over the past five years becomes the thing that I, you know, chase for the next 10 years right. instead of, I got to keep reinventing myself mm. and, and going after the new beast to slay. So what, to speak. Are the, what are those, some of those challenges? What were they in specific as far as the subject? Well, part of it was, so my first topic was speaking on, um, being a person who was abstinent, right? Like I, I actually didn't have sex until, I was 35 years old, so we can open up a whole new can of worms if you want to do that. But <laughs> That's crazy. you're like, wait a minute. So now, now here's the thing. I, my, my faith became prominent. I heard in one of your episodes, your, your dad said that you come from a family of ministers, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was 20, my faith became a really big portion of my life. And at that point, I was like, okay, like, how do I like make a difference and talk? And somebody was like, Hey, you want to speak on abstinence? And at that point I wanted to talk about anything to make a difference. Right mm. now, little did I know that was going to be one of the most difficult topics to speak on because it's like talking to teenagers about, you know, doing the thing that everybody wants to do. Right. Or talking to wolves about like not eating meat, like it's just <laughs> yeah, not going to work. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I think that was the thing is I, I, I started to cut my teeth on like, if you could communicate this really mm. difficult thing, man, you could do, you could yeah, do anything. Else? Um, and like I said, we can, we can open up this whole, cause there's a lot, there's a lot here to talk Go about. Go ahead. We might as well. <laughs> you um, brought us here. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, that stopped. And then it was like, okay, can you do this just in the realm of leadership? Can, cause I, for me that the, the topic of abstinence wasn't really about the choice when it came to the sex. It was really about what does it look like to lead yourself at a really high level? Mm. And be in a world where everybody's making this choice amongst other choices that I wasn't making. And how can you be yourself when everybody else is like, what's wrong with you? That's not normal. That's not cool. Right? Yeah, like, outcast. Yeah. And for whatever reason, when I was growing up, I, I kind of understood you are your most powerful oftentimes when you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Mm. Oh, or were you not? Like <laughs> I never looked at it like that. Hey, I ain't looking at it like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check it out. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's funny you said, I don't mean to laugh. Go, 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 go. Because I know it's really in your faith. Yeah. How, and this might be a little too off the deep end. So no, go for me. Before I go, 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 go. <sighs> All right. That don't hurt. <laughs> Which part? All of it. Oh man, I mean, I'm it telling you, no, it, it never hurt. You never got blue balls. <laughs> I mean, 
It yeah, gets bad out here. <laughs> it's, it, gets, saying, it, gets, like, it gets real in the streets. It's super real. It's getting real right here. It's getting super real. It's getting super real. Thirty five of them things before. Well, He's at you know, and I kept things. like tiptoeing the line of like, what do I want to partake in, and what right, do I not? Got you. So you <laughs> so, had your scares, where for it's just sure. Like man, but for sure, I, I always <laughs> it's it's crazy that you said it uh, within your explanation that like I met somebody that explain the importance of abstinence but didn't explain it like uh uh not like uh i'm waiting until i'm married like yep. abstinence is just the practice of not having mm. sex period so not knowing not being aware that it's like okay it's not me saving myself to a marriage it's just having control saying no i'm being abstinent for here but it has discipline over yourself mm. yeah so it's like you could say i'm abstinent for the year that means I'm doing 100%. this to control myself, which is what you were saying. It's about self. Right. Um, so I, I get it from that that perspective. It's just, <laughs> it's like, just... I know I'm not doing that because <laughs> well, I know I'm not doing it because I think it's cool and y'all doing like like so, <laughs> we're not asking you. Right, 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 right. We're not is asking not, you. This is definitely not, this is definitely not an infomercial to be like, here's why you need to do it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and because this was part of the thing for me, right? It's like I'm I'm a real person with real desires the whole time, figuring out who I am too, mm -hmm. right? Through it all, and I'll fast forward, move to LA, and uh, I started dating a girl who's an actress, right? <laughs> and so her and I did not have the same story. We 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 basically you know start this relationship, and we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> and funny enough. She, we were in a broken up phase. She gets cast for a show called Jane the Virgin. <laughs> I had to watch that show before. Right? I have to. So now this is where my, my life felt like a TV show or a movie <laughs> because we're in this broken up place. And then I see her like on Conan O'Brien. And she's like, yeah, for, you know, off and on I've been dating this guy who he was waiting and then helped me prepare for this role. <sighs> Wild, wow. right? Wild. <laughs> like, like I'm like, is this wait, it's her? Yeah, it was yeah. her. He like, man, I didn't even, I accidentally got. Practice. Wait, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Should we be arguing over some rights here? I know, right? I'm like, should we? Should the should the legal team be? Where's my agent, yo? Where's my agent? We got a great team. Okay, let's go. Yeah, like, great team, let's man. go. So basically, you know, we're we're broken up. She's she's like rising to fame, and and I'm. Like I'd be in New York and I would see her face on a bus. And I'm just like, this is crazy, man. Like it feels like my life is a rom-com. <laughs> and I'd have been came home, slammed my I mean, they making I'm fun like, of me. I, gotta, I, I, fun I definitely of me. have to make this into a movie, you know? Straight up. So finally then then we get back together Word. again while she's like um taping, I think it was either season two or three. And at this point, you know, we're like trying to figure out is this is this moving to mm -hmm. like marriage? Is this going to be the relationship? And I'm like, you know what? We've had this up and down rocky thing. The only thing that's missing is we haven't gone there, right? We haven't had sex. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe it's the, the secret to, like, that's the secret sauce here. And that's going to be the thing that changes everything. And so we do it, right? We go there. And sure enough, though, it was not the secret sauce, as, as we know. It is not the thing that makes two people glue together long term yeah. right <laughs> yeah no it, it's great it's great for a moment yeah and and that's part of what you know i experienced in, in that is like we we, we used it <laughs> what do you got what do you got <laughs> he's a child keep going i'm not a child i'm not a child i'm just what? saying Shreddy. I don't know. It's, it's a good part. It's a, good it's part. a great part. No, it's, it's a great a, part. It's a big part. It's no, he's just saying it's not yeah. what he thought it meant. It, right. It's the sauce, though. I would say it's a sauce. It's definitely a it's sauce. It's not the sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a difference. Like, this is a there great sauce. Yeah, this there is we a go. great sauce. <laughs> but this, this, ain't, this ain't the sauce. There we go. That's right? it. There like, we go. It's, it's a sauce, but not the sauce. And I think that's where I like I learned that. And now, mind you, you know, that was the beginning of a different phase of my life where I was like, okay, what do I do now? Cause it's gone. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I, I was going back and forth with me being like, well, it doesn't matter now. Cause I've given right. it away and maybe, you know, I could just be with this girl and that girl. And my, the ups and downs of the next few years were vastly different for me. 
So all of that being my, a portion of my story yeah. where I was figuring out like, what does it mean to love? What is, what is sexuality or sex really mean to me? What's the sacred part of it or the part that's mundane? And, you know, cause I noticed you guys ask a lot of like in the beginning of your shows, what does this mean to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I needed, I had my own story or arc of figuring out what that meant to me. And again, owning it in a way that not too many people could. Yeah. Or do, mm -hmm. you know? And I would not. I'm going to tell you right now, I would not be able to handle that well. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm telling you, here yeah. in a Puerto Rican man from <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> he <laughs> said and say he was abstinent for that long is unheard of. So it's just like, it caught me off guard. I'm like, all the, all the, all the Puerto Rican I know. I'm it, oh, oh, now you're now you're well known amongst the community of Puerto no, Rico. He knows all the what he I, 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 I stay out there. Wait up, see what I'm saying? I talked to a couple Puerto Rican girls coming up, and I don't, I don't be over there how you be. You be no, comfortable. you be projecting. That's what that is. This is projection. There we go. He'll no. stay over there, get his hair cut over there. He do <laughs> On too division? much. Yeah, that's oh my God. That's Luquillo's? At Luquillo, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's if go. If I'm lying, I'll fly to Paris. Let's Paris. go. Oh, right, but, but, no, 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 there was no Dominicans there. It's a Puerto Rican neighborhood. Racist. But, yes, yeah, there were, that's, but, true. that's but, true. But, but, oh, a little, little, little I asterisk, said, little Dominican, asterisk, but little asterisk. I would go over there, and I went over there for one specific barber. I went over there, and he would do like, uh, we would get graphics in the back of our hair. And I didn't trust anybody else to do Who it. Who was getting graphics first? Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no. I own that. I own that. But this is, this is the best part. It's the best part. I got him for, well, I had been going like maybe a year, two years. Mm -hmm. He talks this way to me about it. And making fun of me and da 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 like cool. Every other day, every other haircut, it's dap 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 dap. Why are you going over there? Why you gotta do this? Bring us some rice, yeah. No rice. Listen up, listen up, listen, listen, listen. I don't know what it was. This deep. This this part of it runs deep. Okay. He did all that talking. We it was a school dance. Some I don't know if it was prom or whatever. And I need. He had a big big day. He had to be. You know, he had to look fresh. Had to look nice. Where do you think he went? On division. <laughs> in California, like, yeah. took his He's black, like, I gotta and go then there. went over there, went to my barber, and got the graphics like a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a... Like, uh, with the rays, I was impressed. I said, the only other yeah, person... and it was all smooth and clean. The only yeah. person, but the only other person I ever did a razor was him. That you did a razor on me, but it was like he would cut me first, and then he would make it more slick with the razor. Yeah. I looked in the mirror, I'm like, damn, the size match? Oh, ooh. Uh, look at the back. He just gave me the little. You're graphic. welcome. Oh, bro. You're welcome. Gosh, you went crazy. I ain't gonna hold you. I went crazy at the dance, but I'm looking like, damn, shorty sure just went nuts. But no, I was the only black person there, though. It's not your neighborhood. Like, we never claimed that we I, shouldn't be over there. Told, this is what made me think that this man <laughs> got some sort of ties because he be kicking it over here. Like, no, he, no, no, no. I wasn't no, kicking it over spot. there. You know why you get I mean, there. you down there three, four hours. You, you got to come in there, let them know, like, how many well, you got in front of you. Then you got to go. Have you had a hibato sandwich? Hibato? A hibato sandwich? That's not no. the uh, breakfast sandwich, is it? Uh, I mean, like it can't be. So, no, no, no. So basically, it's no. a steak sandwich that instead of French bread, they use uh, plantain that they smash and fry instead oh, okay. of the bread. Have you had those? No. I didn't have any, but the dude would come in and sell those. Fire. Yeah. I, if you I, haven't I, had one, I think they got I'm a spot over here. I think yeah. they got a spot over here. Food here is not the same as no, it is in no, Chicago. You eat way yeah. better in Chicago, right? hundred percent. To me, is if you can make a hot dog taste as immaculate mm. as Chicagoans make a hot dog taste. You know you have some special sauce. And if you put <laughs> right. and you put, right. back to the sauce. Yeah. Yeah. And if you the put marker. ketchup on your hot dogs, you're weird. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the transition um, of being a local speaker yeah. and then taking it to a national level. Yeah. What was the transition like? Yeah. yeah. And then just like, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> how do you gain enough momentum that you can go from those intimate settings? Like, what was your path and how did you see yourself even being able to say, I could do 10,000, I yeah. could do 20,000 people? Because the intimate setting, I've done some public speaking, the <clears throat> intimate setting sometimes is the bigger challenge to me. Interesting. Just yeah. because I feel like with the intimate setting, I really have to tap into 
20 different people. The broad, I just feel like the speech got to be there, got to hit, the message got to hit. But when I'm in that room with 20 people, I feel like I got to- It's visual. Yeah, I, I feel like I got to give him a moment of two minutes that he really feel me. And then get over here and work this area and work this side. And, and like I got to yeah. do too much to pull out of each person. And I feel like in the bigger rooms, I felt like it was easier. So I always wanted somebody's perspective that had to do that all the time. Because mm -hmm. usually I could just use basketball and that talk for us. Right. But to do that and have to deal with the reactions, yeah. is that a challenge? I wouldn't say it's a challenge. I think they're different art forms, right? There's different forms of mastery. Because I think you, it's actually easier. And I think this is part of what you were describing. It's easier to hide in a bigger crowd. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult when there's two you know, five, whatever, that small, mm -hmm. quaint environment where mm -hmm. now, okay, you could smell if I'm mm -hmm. straight up. Yeah, you can see If there's just all. five people here. Straight up. But when there's 5,000, if I get momentum going. And a microphone. And a microphone, yeah, like my, my voice booms and, and now I found the way to make you laugh. I found the story that makes things click mm -hmm. and there's something about an energy with a really big crowd. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, that if you too. create like a, a little bit of energy, that momentum can carry the whole conversation on a larger scale where when you're with five humans in a room, like you have to be a real authentic human being. Yeah, and it's really easy to, one, on both ends, to confuse it as a spectator right. and for somebody to think because they got tons of people coming, like they doing it a certain way that, you know, it's, you know, making an impact and it's not. So hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, it's real easy to get it both ways. It's crazy because I wouldn't I wouldn't even care. I think that especially with giving a speech or doing something that's uh <laughs> anything that's put motivational in front. Like if there's a motivational speaker coming, I guess I naturally can weed out like I don't care if he practices this. He's giving mm. us this as a jewel. Mm. If it fueled me, it did his job. So it's like sometimes I don't even care for you to walk it. Like if you put it out there, I'll take it and run with it. Yeah, depending on what it is. Yeah, you could just spark it up, brother. I'll take it and run yeah. with it. I wow. it. But you wouldn't with abstinence. So. <laughs> we found this the kryptonite. Yeah, we <laughs> found the kryptonite. <laughs> that's that kryptonite. Straight up on that kryptonite. That's yeah, the one you were like this. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's hard. That would be tough to convince me that. That would be tough. <laughs> Even though I said all that, what I did yeah. learn is uh, there was a time during basketball that every training camp and any time I had, like, unless I had an actual steady girlfriend, and even with a steady girlfriend, I wouldn't do it much. It was, I can't deal with you like that during training camp. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, you're not picking up your phone. I don't care. Yeah. I'm a completely a robot during training camp. I don't know what it was. Every year, this is like two to four weeks that I'm a robot. I'm, a, I'm whatever y'all want until I'm in top shape and ready to attack the season. Once I feel like it does the click thing in my head where I'm like, all right, I'm super mm -hmm. in mode now. Now I can inherit different energies, whatever, and know my routine and know what I need to get back to. But until I get to that... <laughs> I would yeah. definitely be abstinent. And that was self-imposed. Like nobody, <laughs> that wasn't another thing that somebody told you. No, you just kind of learned that. Between mm -hmm. me and basketball, that's, that's, Interesting. that's something to do with my mission. But it's like you said with your faith, like, because I really believe that, right. like, nah, like, you're going to just, like, I think it happened to me where I had a training camp or just a preseason event that happened with a girl where it just, it had me off my game. And mm. I was like, yeah. All that, like, right? So you ain't that it, like it's definitely. So not he'll go abstinent for basketball. For basketball, for basketball, for sure. Mm. I mean, it just communicates your love for the game, right? Like you were so devoted to the game that but you I, wanted I, to be your I best. I yeah. love the game more I didn't, than the sex. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think yeah. about that though. Like you really made me think about that. What's like, that? When you just think about abstinence, period. It's it's trying to give not just that. Like that's what I used to think. Like oh, it's for you. Like you trying to get back on track. Like if somebody just told me that, that's my immediate thought. But the way you just made me think about it is now he's trying to not just, you know, do something for himself, but it's like he's trying to change something. Like he's trying to, he sees something down the line that clearly he might want, so he's putting more value on this. And, you know, like not getting a reward at the end, so to speak, but, 
you know, at the same time, it's almost like he's doing this to get to another point. Right. Or they're doing this to get to another point. Not so much, you know, they're just working on themselves. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I was never <laughs> working on myself. <laughs> but I had to uh, get into a, a, a certain mode and become a certain person. <clears throat> and I didn't care for your feel. Like, it was like a known thing that I don't care for your feelings within yeah. this time. And I need you to to take that L for just me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to occur every year, but... This is training camp, yeah. Like, and it's war. It's fighting for a position. It's whatever we got to go through. I I can't explain it to you. Like, it's this is twenty one years before I even met you. Like, I don't know how to explain twenty one years, but that's how long I wanted this. You don't mean more. And it's the value you can see now. The value right. in your work up until that that's, point. I yeah. mean, that says a lot because I think that's the thing. I feel like, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this because I think so many people want something, but they're not willing to sacrifice for it. Like they won't, they aren't willing to pay the, the price, price. Mm -hmm. even if it is okay for X amount of time. I'm not going to be with this honey right here. Like if somebody told you, yeah, you'll make the league if you do that. I guarantee you. Oh, you that's the it. recipe. Straight I'll up. do it. That's how you cook it up, right? Oh, okay. Instead of saying no, it, it's about forming a discipline, forming a way of showing up in the world, knowing that if I want to get this, it like I got to sacrifice things, something, stuff, something. whatever it is. Uh, empowering the youth. What do you mm -hmm. feel like the biggest issues are that our youth faces? Oh, man. I mean, I feel like when we were growing up, it's like you had to know how to fight your way through anything in a good way. And now if your feelings are hurt, you're not going to show up. So I think grit is one of the most important sort of like topics or character mm. traits to talk about. Cause it's like, how can you be the type of human being who can literally make it through anything instead of one thing goes wrong and now you fall apart. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've, I've seen it, you know, time and time again, when I, when I am speaking to young folks now, it's wild because I think it's, it's kind of transitioning to older folks too. Like there are people, it doesn't matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I have the benefit of working with, I mean, all across the age spectrum. Now I even work with athletes as well, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot on mindset and mental skill game of it. And, and I mean, I'm sure you've experienced some of it with maybe teammates where if the media says something, the guy's like, done. And you're like, do you know how to move through that in a powerful mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. Or if you're not performing at a high level, done. Instead of what does it look like to still be a powerful human being when the performance wasn't there? Is your identity still intact? Kind of how you showed up at your worst. Right. And I think that's one of the most like valuable skills to teach people, right? Is like when things aren't going your way, are you clear on who you're committed to being? Do you have a, a clear understanding of your identity and your power in those moments? Because if not, the outside world will get the best of you. Yeah. That's that discipline you was talking about. 100%. Yeah, I struggle with that all the time. What? Just like he said, um, Remember, I told you plenty of times before, like, that's kind of like a person, well, not personification, but just like a manifestation of what I've been telling you. Like, I don't know if you remember, I used to tell you all the time, like, especially the past two or three years, I used to have to tell you, I'm not the same person I was before. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel the same. I don't look the same. Like, I'm just, I'm not, in a way, I'm not me anymore. Like, yeah. it's almost like that part of me is, it's dead. Yeah. Just because, you know, it, it it just it is. Time. But at the same time, it's just like I feel sometimes like it's, it's like the Mike Tyson thing where it's kind of like you feel like a just because you can't tap into that anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like that kind of got me in my mind that acting the way that I did before got me up until this point. Right. So it's almost just like, why can't I get back into that mode? And yeah, it's just tough to deal with, especially when it goes wrong. Yeah. Because you just like, man, when, if this happened to me and I'm always doing that, if this happened to me 20 years ago. I wouldn't have got it right, but I wouldn't feel this bad. Right. Like, I would be I able to on. move on. Yeah. yeah. But now, no. Nah. Like now certain stuff is just more meaningful to me. So it's like I can't. And it's just like I can't leave it. Like I, even if I can't control it, like I just can't leave it. You know as well, he was one of my biggest teachers in I don't give a hmm. Because he had this ability to do stuff and throw it away. Like, I don't know how he would do it, but he would throw it away. And then it was like, not only would he throw it away, if you hadn't thrown it away yet, he would come and then, like, get to the next play, so to speak. But he would get to the next thing. Like, it's like, you're 
why are you? And he like, bro, dad finna be here. Like, I'm not finna get a whooping for not cleaning up. And we already fought. Mm -hmm. Like, we not gonna compound it. Like, but I don't care about the fight. Like, it was the argument I cared about. We fought. It's over. Now we need to hurry up and clean up. Whether you and your feelings or not, figure it out. Like, I don't care. Right. Like, and I had to adjust to somebody who didn't care and I couldn't like bully him. Like he was bigger than me. But it was like, I learned how to deal with an attitude that it was like, sometimes it just ain't about you. Like yeah. I was stuck mm -hmm. in a place where everything was about me. And I started realizing people have a whole day that has nothing to do with you. Yep. I had a day in a different grade with different people now I have to come home and be on one accord with y'all, have the room clean. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you have no clue I've been annoyed all day, but I'm annoyed. You came in here being annoying. We got into it. I told you to stop. You thinking it's all cool because you had a, just a fun day in third grade or yeah. whatever, the, however old I was. He just like, you had a fun day. Like, that's cool. You all jolly go lucky. You want to play games, try to trip me while I'm going upstairs. And I had a hard day. I got a lot of homework today. I got to lock in. And I had to start realizing damn, ain't nobody tripping off me. Like, ain't nobody really worried about me. Like, mm -hmm. I need to be, I need to learn that he got his own day. He's older. My oldest brother, he got his own day. He's older. You know what I'm saying? And it helped me when I got older to be like, damn, the only thing that matters now when I find that, that time where it's just like, damn, I don't know what the f why can't I tap back into that? Mm -hmm. It's like, I be like, damn, bro. It's because I don't need it no more. Yeah. Like there's a version of me that I'm like every time I go through something in my in a relationship in a a, a friendship whatever it's like I want to tap back into like and I have to have that moment like you not 16 yeah we don't handle yeah. problems like that just because you haven't seen this problem since you were 16 it doesn't mean you have to handle it like your 16 year old mm -hmm. self. You know what I'm saying? And that I know that identity crisis that she talked about with Mike Tyson where it's just like, you want to turn into that and you're like, why can't I do it? Like, why can't I go Super Saiyan? The best man? thing, no, to me, it's the Hulk. When he, in the <laughs> Thor movie where he was just like, oh, can't he just it. can't do it. Uh, yeah. How do you connect with young people uh, that you feel like uh, are disconnected with society? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, so I like to phrase it like, how do I just connect with people, right? Because I think if I'm looking at that way, where it's like, you're young, you're not young or whatever, however we want to categorize you, at the end of the day, you're a person. Yeah. And for me, the, the easiest connecting point is our stories are probably more similar than they are different. Mm -hmm. And if I can really master my own story, I'm going to be able to connect to whoever. What makes you say that? That uh, our stories are more similar than different? I think, I think the more we sit down with people, Right, we're gonna figure out, well, you've experienced loss. And that's a human thing. You want things. That's a human thing. Right? Like you're trying to figure out who you are. That's human. And I, I, I think we're so good at at times finding the differences that we almost like train our minds to find mm -hmm. how we're different than how we're connected. And I think a lot of times when we just sit down with folks and the more we can ask questions, real questions, be honest, be real, we're like, man. We're not as different as we right. think. That's all right. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. even though that's what helps politicians at times, look at them over there. Look at them over there. Aren't you afraid of them? Okay, now follow me. Mm -hmm. Instead of if we found the connecting points, we could actually work together to accomplish something bigger. Yeah. But sometimes that's, you know, not the agenda. Yeah, easier said than done. Right, right. I joke yeah. around about it, but I, I have no problem sitting in a, a crib full of Puerto Ricans. So y'all deal with me. <laughs> Puerto Ricans, <laughs> Dominicans, you know? Or the Dominicans. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm cool with all the households. I'm cool with all the households. I hope the, so. I'm down with all the coaches. Like, I got all type <laughs> of coaches. I sit in on everything, but... Whoever cooks, it does have to be good. I don't care what we whipping up, <laughs> plantain, burgers, whatever we doing. That's the number one food be. projection. Yeah, yes, this is the projection. I, know, like, I want that burger now. I do. He, I see he, like a food show coming up. It's just like, you know, oh, tour, you know, you you know, know <laughs> I do. Be, it's, it's already in the works. Yeah, it's already in the works. Yeah. 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 Give me, yeah. Put the bike on. Give right. me the Janet bike too when we do it. Uh, but yeah, I want, I, I want that. I want, I want to try it. Have you had a vice little burger? You I don't know, know what I that have. is. What is you the Vice Lord burger? Where they put the yeto the meat on the uh, on the burger. 
on a cheeseburger. So that's it's a it. cheeseburger with you don't you know don't meat on top. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, is that a South Side thing? It's, it's, wow. You know the city. It's a you South Side thing. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. a South Side thing. Wow. But yeah, yeah. Is it a South I've, Side thing? It's not an Out West thing. I've never had a Vice Lord Burger. Mm-hmm. I don't believe South that's an Out West thing. I don't is know it? why, but no, it's a South Side thing. South Side, for real? Yeah. Every other place in the South Side. We got to do it. We got to do it. Yeah, go to the comment. Yeah, let's investigate. Dear Chicago, we need you. Dear Chicago, we need you. Let's take a poll. Um, Vice Lord Burgers, <laughs> West, <laughs> South, <laughs> good or bad as well. West, so over, yeah. over East, y'all gotta stay out of this one. Y'all gotta yeah. stay out of this one. Yeah. They might be the ones that say, "You're like that was us over East." That was us. Wow. <laughs> what role do you think vulnerability <laughs> plays? <laughs> Yo, no I segue. love your segue. <laughs> no segue. <laughs> It's done. He's no. like, how'd it go? All right, now straight to vulnerability. <laughs> sure. Leave it up to it. Oh, bro, <laughs> when you talk about vulnerability, yeah. uh, let's talk about the role it plays in manhood, fatherhood, and, well, really, when you have to do your speeches and your motivational speaking, like, how is that, what is that like with vulnerability, and is there a too much or too little? I mean, I don't think anything worthwhile can happen without vulnerability. Because it's basically, I think it goes back to the human thing. It's like you sit with somebody and you let them know, I have weaknesses. I, I, like, I am not sitting here as a perfect person who is complete. Mm-hmm. I'm a work in progress. I'm figuring things out. And I love to do that with my kids, even though my daughter's three and, and my, my boy is one. We do it more with my daughter, letting her know, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I made a mistake. Um, I didn't experience that. Growing up, I didn't experience my parents being like, my bad. Right. You know what I mean? And Our moms ours did. either. Your mom, Our mom did. did. Mom uh-uh. would give us a She's sorry. never come to me and, and apologized. Not I love one on one. You're not I getting no one on ones. You're not but getting no one on ones. She has never come back like, I'm sorry, I just did what I did to you. Like, never. Oh, no, not for no. Father so never came back. Back. <laughs> you know, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about just like if they made a mistake or they was late picking us up from something or something they'd be like I'm so sorry I had to never got that I just knew not to say that well I was a third yeah. child well, that's so they was a little right? nicer they, were, they, they was a little nicer by the time they yes. got to your boy man yeah. I don't know about these two they got right. the short ends no. so no. that mean, <laughs> that, mean don't, yeah, that mean eggshells like if they showed up late that mean eggshells especially with your mother that means she you know she wired up like oh, that means crazy. something happening that's why I used to just get in there and you just got sit the, and put your yeah. It's crazy. No, 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 we all had different parents. I saw a clip about that. We all had different parents. Yeah. Even though we had the same parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Different time frames. No, you said no. No, no, I'm on, I wasn't being funny. I wasn't being <laughs> funny that time. I was my bad church. Watch it. My bad church. <laughs> Watch it. My bad church. All right. Uh, but it was, it was like I, dad was a certain way when he had Paca, a certain way when he had Ari. Then you're gonna be a certain way with me. And then by the time they got to Kasani, it's like, y'all soft. Oh, okay. <laughs> y'all yeah. mushy now. Like, oh, y'all. Yeah, looking oh, at them no. as grandparents, too, just oh, times about yeah. two. Oh, yeah, how is that? Yeah, worse. let's talk about same that. Yes. You, got, you my, got two. I mean, my parents, same thing. Like, my kids can do whatever they want. And I'm mushy. like, hey, we're trying to set boundaries we're and we're trying to put them to sleep at this we're time and they can't have sugar. And they're like, okay, they're just, you know, bathing in a sugar bath. All type of <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm like, we told you. You like, you like, no, she's learning how to do it on her own and eat on her own, and they still doing the airplane. Yeah, they right, eat them, right. they coddling them. Every time they cry, they pick them right up. I'm yeah. like, Duh. and our girls, when they go to, uh, they get together, and when oh, they get it's... together, it's like a little army. Oh yeah. But when they go, they go to our uh, mother's house. They sleep with her. They're literally hanging mm. on her. On oh, bro. The entire time. When we get over there, our mother is walking like she's like walking gingerly, not moving much. Just like, oh hey baby, like woo woo. By the time we're getting ready to leave with them <laughs> girls, my mom is moving super fast. <laughs> Like for real, it's like they she wired. Yeah, yeah, she wired, but but it also she's like they make me move again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I'm really just chilling because yeah. I ain't got nothing to do and I don't want to do nothing. But when our girls are there, even my father, he's moving mm-hmm. up and down the That's steps, awesome. picking stuff up. So they like them being around. They like we feel young. The mm-hmm. vitality, yeah, yeah from their energy, right? Yeah, yeah. but that's yeah. why they be so giving because they be like we need them the same way. You know what I'm saying? Y'all needed us. Like, we yeah. need them now, like, to keep us young, keep us upbeat, keep us doing stuff and going outside and hanging out. But just listen oh, every now God. and then. Just listen. <laughs> That's all. I just want to. 
listen to me. I'm a parent too. Yeah, oh, bro. like I'm here too. Well, well we're, uh, about vulnerability though, because I feel like it connects to the parenthood thing. I mean, I don't know how you felt about this, but having those conversations with my parents was a very vulnerable thing too. It's like, hey, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a knock against how you did it or the way that you showed up. But this but, is how I'm doing. But like, I have my own ideas. Mm -hmm. And I have a, my counterpart has her right. ideas. And we're a different unit. Mm -hmm. And we want to establish, and, there, and you know, it takes a lot of vulnerability to have that conversation with your parents. That's why I think it's, it's really one of the most important postures to take for us as humans to be like, I'm willing to step into this zone yeah. where like somebody may not like it. I could get hit <laughs> physically or, or that's emotionally. How, that's, yeah, right? me and my mother and father, it was a couple of times we really like got over, into yeah. it. It's like, over, this is my kid. Right, the parenting. And it wasn't even, you know, stepping away from it. It wasn't that big a deal, but it's just like, man, like I need y'all. You never they, really been into it with your parents. You ain't had that, no reason to stand up to your parents. That and, no, but I kind of, you know, it was kind of built up. I didn't notice it, but was it was combative. built up. Yeah, was, no, 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 I wasn't combative. <laughs> no, I wasn't combative, but I was just like, yo, you're not understanding why yeah. I want this. Like, why I want to have my own parenting style and I don't want to be, you know, doing what you did with me. Like, I get it. It worked with me in your eyes, but yeah. I don't want to do it that way. Right. Especially, too, because I'm like, I got a daughter. Like, none of the y'all pulled is going to work <laughs> with this one. Yeah. And they know that. And I right? wrapped around a finger already. Just that stay too. Yeah, I'm that's, already that's, a sucker. <laughs> I'm already don't screwed. make me more of a sucker. It's too much. It Joe really is. It really is tough with daughters, man. It, oh, man, she's got me... Like, yeah, when you say wrapped around the finger, it's like, like my it's, goodness, man, like, I can't, I can't say it's no to her in no, so many no. ways. It's, it's tough. It hurts. It no, really it, does. it hurts. You know, it she physically the perfect hurts. frown yet? She's got it all. She's got yeah. all the moves. And oh. right now, when we try to put her, put her to bed, she's like, I just want to hang out more. Like she'll be, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we'll be like, here for yeah, another hour. Mine is like, 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 I want to stay up. <laughs> I'm like, I want to hang out. Yeah, she, oh, no, no, she knows me because she said the other day, she literally said, she's like, I just want to talk to you more. Whoa. I'm like, you're three years old and you know the way to my heart. Oh, bro. <laughs> right. She got you. Just yeah, she got you. With me. She got you. I was like, you know, my favorite thing is when you leave the kids alone and you finally see that your kid like has a good head on their shoulders because you see the type of videos they play on YouTube. And I like hearing when they're like by themselves practicing words, oh, like yeah, seeing, participating. Oh man, seeing yeah. Rue like yeah. practice words, and then hearing Junie be like, "Yeah, she's just practicing." And I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Yeah, I gave her this today, but I'm gonna give her." They got another video, mm. and I'm like, "Wow, my daughters are teaching each other how to speak." And <laughs> mm. Like this is so cool. <laughs> like, this is supposed to happen. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like, yeah, like that's so awesome. Talk about vulnerability, yeah. right? Cause cause I, I mean, because that that what that sparks for me is like to truly be yourself in a world that wants you to be something else. Yeah, is a vulnerable act, right? Like to not fear that people are gonna come down on me for being me. Mm -hmm. Even if it is, I want to, I want to like watch my word game or yeah. I want to express myself, you know, I want to paint my dad's nails. I want to come on set, whatever, like that way of showing up in the world, I think is very foreign because we're really good at being who somebody else wants us to be because we think mm -hmm. it's safer mm -hmm. Yeah. instead of figuring out, no, it is. Yeah. It's a little bit threatening because people can talk about me and not like me and not want to hang out with me. But the vulnerable posture of like, I got to figure out who I am and then have the courage to show up that way day in and day out. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. You got to show in day and day right. out. Show, show up day and day out. There right. we go. Oh, bro. Mm. Great right, words from motivational speaker. <laughs> They're letting us know we're <laughs> short on time. This. So He's come been on. doing this yeah. for a little bit. He's eating it up. He's been doing this we for like a little bit. We like to ask all our guests, yeah. what are you working on improving about yourself right now? Personally. Let's, we're going we're gonna to be real. Yeah. So I'm in therapy with my wife right now, yeah. if, if we get really mm. real about it. And, right. um, you know, I... The other day I said in a therapy session, I said, you know, I don't like who I become when my needs aren't met. Mm. And I like, you know, you get, you get married and you're like, I've worked on myself so much that I feel like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to slay this thing. And then I don't know if you guys feel like that, but no, it was the way you laid it up. It was the phrasing. It's like I worked on my. I'm gonna I'm go. No, oh, when you say slay this thing, I don't know if you went. Your mind went over there. Okay, got it. The secret sauce times one, two, three. Go on, go I on. Know, you just went like this. 
<laughs> the, the next the note. energy, yo. Yeah. The energy. Like in the you room. said it. Yeah. The energy in the room. <laughs> yeah, you changed it. You yes. changed it. I, I, I tried to I hold it. it. I tried I to let you can't, finish. You can't. I, I, I tried. noticed that so far. Yeah, you can't hold it in. You got to go like, oh, yeah. You'll try, but he couldn't. Go ahead. Bring it home. Now I forgot. Well, okay, let me let me try to let me try to find the cadence. Therapy with the wife. Therapy with the wife. And you know, I'm like, I worked on myself and I'm not gonna slay the thing, but I, I feel like I can I can be a great husband day in and day out, no matter what's happening. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I realized, man, you know, if needs aren't being met, I can be a husband. You know, right. I I can shut down or like isolate and not want to talk about things, and that's just not who I would say I am naturally. Um, and I'm I'm working on like being the type of person that I want to be, even if certain needs aren't met, you know, whether that be, I want a quality conversation at this point, because when you have two kids, a lot of your time and energy is wrapped up in the kids. And again, there's nothing that can prepare you for it mm. mentally, emotionally, you know, physically, spiritually, because you are pouring so much into them. And then you do have an expectation about your partner that they would also be like superpower next level. So they, oh, now let me show up for you and vice versa. Um, so I'm working on that, I would say, consistently. It's like I want to be the high-quality person that I'm committed to being in the midst of some of the drain of having a couple of little ones who have so many needs themselves. Yeah. And I want, you know, committed to being patient, you know, com- committed to listening and being empathetic um, through, through it all, committed to being vulnerable, even when I feel like um, maybe it's not given to me in the times that I want it or I feel like I deserve it. You know, mm. I, I realized that too, is like, it can be like, if you, I'll just speak for myself. When I don't check myself, it can be a tit for tat dynamic. Oh, you did this, I'll mm. do that. That's how I am. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that's one of the things for me is like really working on, I want to keep carving that out so that I can keep being, you know, if we go back to leading with love, what does it look like for me to be a loving husband day in and day out when it's easy to be? A drained husband, mm. you know, an angry husband, or an angry husband, mm. or a resentful husband, or that's better. Resentful is better. Yeah, yeah. or a fearful husband. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that. Where I shut down. Uh, um, I don't like arguing with people, especially like I don't think women will ever understand like looking how they look and actually arguing with a man. Mm. I'm like, you pretty and you getting tough with me. It's just like a, <laughs> it's a disconnect that happens. Mm. And then I find myself just quiet because now I'm like staring at them. <laughs> but then I realize I've completely checked out. Yeah. Like, I have no clue what you're talking about anymore. I'm literally just here and I'm just trying to control my attitude where it's like, how am I mad at somebody that's pretty? That's weird to me. It's yeah. like weird. It like messes with my man code. And then I'll make the, my problem is after that, I make a dumb decision in the outside world because now I need a male, I need a battle now. Right. Because I felt that feeling of getting there. So it's like, what do you do with that energy is my challenge in life, which is what basketball has done for me for so long. Anytime I get there and I need it, that's like a fight to me. Mm. Basketball is a fight, release endorphins, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Nice little war. Now, Call of Duty, whew, wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Like, it's the best game ever because it's just a perfect, like, if you could ever work that into one of your speeches, bro. The Call of Duty, let's go. Whew, it's just like the militant mindset. I've been telling him to get down for You play? No. Oh, yeah. Look how calm he is. That's and the well abstinence. spoken. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's I had the me abstinence. Don't let me do that. Calm, yeah. like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's the abstinence, man. I know my boy probably wants some excitement now. He done got in there now. He done got in there now. He got in there Joanne, man, let them know where to follow you. And if you want to promote anything, get it off. Plug yeah. it. Do so, what you um, Johan Speaks is uh, my, my IG handle. And that's probably where I'm at most on uh, social media life. Okay. Uh, something to plug, though. So me and a, a couple friends where we've created a um, uh, coaching um, development. It's called development. Yeah. So essentially 
we said, all right, there's folks that want to grow in this world. Right. We cooked up development because we said, we're going to create a team of people committed to helping people become their best. That's, that's for me. I want to help people be their best and I want to be the best at helping people be their best. Like, what does it look like, you know? The best of the best of the best. 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 (laughs) Levels levels to bestness, right? (laughs) With honors. DJ Keller, we the best. We the best. Major key alert. Oh, bro. Oh, all that. I I, like this. Because I I, I look at myself like, at my core, I'm a servant, and I want to just continue to walk alongside folks as they go after their thing. And I'm like, I'm here to help you get your thing. What is that thing? Mm, Let's do it together. You know what I mean? Instead of that, like, no, if you're going to get your thing, then I can't get my thing, so I can't help you. Right. I really want to be the type of person who's like, I'm going to walk alongside you, whatever we need to do, whoever we need to be to get that, let's go get it. So we cooked up development to bring that to life. I love that you said that, to be of service. Mm-hmm. How many people have what it takes to like step down or step outside themselves for a second and just be of service for somebody else? I feel like he like a priest. But he's not a priest. Real talk. <laughs> That's a lot of motivational like. speakers uh, give you that. Though, they'll give you that vibe for real, though. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, one day, like y'all probably gonna get that that vibe from me. Like, the, oh the, lord. No. <laughs> Oh, As always, <laughs> thank you for rocking with us on Iman Amongst Men. I am Iman Shumpert. And I'm Ari Shumpert. Thanks to our guests, Johan Martinez. Kalilin! Hey, hey, you got it. Yeah, yeah, you get it? Yeah, you get it? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All you got to do is think of Shamili and you'll get that Shaw, right. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I just tried a little too hard. Hey, make sure you go rate five stars, <laughs> review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. And to view the full video episodes, you're going to head over to YouTube, search Iman Amongst Men, and click subscribe. And until next time, y'all, we are gone. Hey. There we go.